Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. So, uh, uh, about a year and a half, I made a video on uh, making a deck caddy for a John Deere late model cutting deck. Uh, the 425, 445, and probably all the X5 and X7 series tractors. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if you guys realize or not, but I do like these John Deere garden tractors, and uh, I mess around them quite a bit. So, this is a deck off of my 420 garden tractor, and uh, it's been kicking around in the storage shed for quite a while. It always falls over, um, you know. It it doesn't stand up. Obviously, there's there's you know it's got the draft arms that are falling over and the drive shaft and and even the uh, chute. And I kind of have these things uh, kind of wire tied. But um, so today is the day. I, I got disgusted with messing with it, and I'm going to uh, make a deck caddy for this. So. Um, as you can see, I ordered up the materials already. I got a, uh, a rectangular piece of steel from McMaster. I think it's an inch and a quarter by three eighths. Um, I got some shafting. I bought some Harbor Freight uh, wheels. So uh, I pondered on this for a while, how to connect everything together. What I have in a super result. So at this point, I'm just gonna kind of settle for making something that's gonna work so I can get this out of my hair and move on with some other projects. So uh, let's go over to the milling machine and let's get started. Okay, here's our setup. So we got some of these whole master wheels, about 10 inches across, a 5 8 uh, inch for the, for the shaft, for the axle shaft. And uh, let me put this down. This is our milling setup. So we got some 5.8 steel stock we got from McMaster. And uh, we have that in our collet block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mill a flat uh, on either side. One flat to kind of register it to the piece of rectangular steel that goes through our cutting deck. And the other flat would be so we could get a, uh, a, a small flat for our bolts or screws, whatever we're going to use. That's something that's on the uh, up in the air right now. I'm not sure if I want to just put pins through it um, or, or some screws. I'd like to be, you know, I'd like to have them easily removable. Um, we'll only have to remove the wheel on one side so we could slide it through the mower deck one way or the other. We don't have to take both sides off, but I don't want to make it any harder uh, to remove it and install it all the time. And I would like to try to find a reasonable size uh, screw to hold it. I mean, we're, it's not going to experience too much force, but yet we don't want a small, you know, 440 screw in there. Uh, so the mill setup, we have a four flute uh, high speed steel roughing mill end mill. It's three quarters. We have it set up in our R8 um, adapter. I just got a nice ER40 to R8 adapter. So it's easy to change the uh, mills out quickly. Uh, and let me bring the camera back a little bit. We are, we're touching off. We're using our new deep bowl uh, depth stop we have it set to zero and I'm gonna start out with about a 200 thousands cut just to see what it looks like on the uh, on the actual part what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to uh, cut the volume because the uh, rotary phase converter I have back here is kinda noisy so um, as soon as I'm done cutting I'll bring you back on the volume I think at some point I'm going to change that phase converter because the other one I have is much quieter. This one I bought used though, the other one was new. I 
Let's try a 30,000 depth of cut.
Okay guys, we flipped the part over uh, 180 degrees. Now we're gonna mill a flat on the opposite side. We also, uh, I just wanna say we have the mill set to 660 RPMs. Twenty-five thousand step to cut to get us started. Take another 25 off. And another 25. go to a full hundred thousands on this side and see how it looks. I feel like I want to go another 25 thousandths. Alright guys, that looks good. So I'm not going to take it out of the collet block. I'm going to bring it over to the other bridge port and we're going to uh, drill the holes for our screws to hold it in place. Alright guys, we're at, the, uh, we're at the other bridge port. We have the uh, second setup where we're just going to drill two holes through here. Um, 
I left a part in the collet block, that way I know it's square and that we're going to drill in the right spot. Um, I centered up our part using the edge finder. Uh, I'm going to go in a half inch. I'm going to drill one hole. I'm going to go in an inch, drill the second hole. For right now, I'm going to use M6 bolts. So I'm drilling 250,000 um, hole through there to accommodate that. I'm going to call up McMaster or go online and order some longer ones. These are a little bit too short. But at least I get an idea of what the size is. Um, I think these bolts will work out fine. Two of them should hold it quite sturdy. Uh, once I get this part done, uh, I'm lacking in um, a vice stop. So I have this one that's half finished. I'm just going to bring that up to the part, lock it down, and then when I bring another one of these over, I'll, uh, I'll get it back where it should be, and then I can move the vice stop out of the way again. So um, here we go. So we're going to move this first hole in uh, a half inch. And by the way, this flat is two inch from left to right, so that should be fine. So we moved our uh, our table 500 thousandths. Uh, I'm going to lock the table, the X and the Y axis. Um, something else I wanted to say about this. It's not, you know, this is not super critical machining. So we're not going to center drill this. We're going to do this as quickly as possible. Hopefully it'll come out halfway decent. Actually, I'm just going to slow the mill down a, a bit. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Uh, we have the mill slowed down to a more respectable speed. 660 RPMs. It's the lowest uh, speed I can go unless I go into back gears. Here we go. That's the first hole. Let's go ahead and move our table one full inch. Okay, we'll lock it down and here we go. We have our two holes drilled. They came out fine. We're just going to go ahead and clean this table off of here so you don't dig any chips into the table when we tighten down the stop. We'll bring the stop up. And that's it. One down and three to go. OK, 
Okay guys, we're back to Bridgeport. Um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to drill a couple small holes in the, uh, in the axle for some hitch pin clips. Uh, and what we're going to do with that is we're going to capture the, uh, the rim. We're going to put some uh, 5 8 washers around uh, the left and the right side of the rim and just put just two, two simple hitch pin clips in there. That way we can go ahead and uh, keep the rim from falling off the axle. So uh, there's no magic to this. Uh, I'm not even going to be so accurate. I just want to get it as uh, close as I can without hitting the collet. Just so I have enough room. <clears throat> That's probably fine. And we're through. Now we're going to run it out to the edge and do the other one. Okay. This video is uh, March 2020 and um, I'm starting to run low on paper towels with this whole coronavirus scare. Hope all you guys and your families are safe. So we pull it out. And there you go. Let me pull it out of the uh, collet or the block. And there is our completed axle. So now we're going to go ahead and mount the. Uh, going to mount this onto the. Um, the part that goes through the uh, cutting deck and we're going to mount the wheel on there and we're going to see how it came out. Okay, here, here's our completed assembly. Uh, I only have the, uh, I ran out of screw so I'm missing one screw up here. But um, So you have your two screws, your bar that fits through the, um, the mower deck and your axle and you can see um, on, on the assembled side, I have a, uh, a hitch pin, I have a 5 8 washer, and on the other side of the axle, I have a hitch pin and a 5 8 washer holding it on that way. And I also, um, spin it around, I, you can see I, I already have the holes drilled for the, the hitch pins, and, uh, and I'll put the other wheel and the 5 uh, 5 8 washer on there. So uh, I'm going to try to find another screw. Uh, oh, also, by the way, I, I went ahead and red Loctited these two screws on. And I just put a little drip of red Loctite on there to denote that so I'll remember. Um, you're not going to want to take both wheels off when you take this off the mower deck. So you'll just go ahead and you'll pull this screw out and the screw that's supposed to be here out. And then you can pull that whole wheel off and this will slide right out, out of the, uh, the mower deck where the... Uh, uh, that wheel that the anti-scalping wheel goes so uh, you know this way I'll remember that these are loctited on and they're pretty much on there for good uh, and this one I'll pull off when I want to take the, the assembly off and put it back on my tractor so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to find more screws and nuts 
and we're going to get over to the uh, mower deck and um, I'll show you how it all came out. Okay guys, we have our chamfering machine set up in the vise, so we're going to take our uh, our, our um, I guess our brackets that run through the uh, cutting deck, we're just going to chamfer off the edges that we cut on the uh, roll and saw because they're, they're kind of rough. It's a little noisy, but... And it does a very nice job. Professional look. I've done a bunch extra. Now it's just a matter of, to uh, drill the holes for the axles. And we're going to be done with this project. Alright guys, we're at the surface plate. And we have our uh, height gauge set up to uh, divide this in half so we're going to get our center line we're just going to scribe some marks nice and quick and easy Doesn't have to be super accurate because this is, uh, you know, just more bracketry than anything else. Now I'm going to set, go ahead and uh, readjust my height gauge so I can uh, get the distance between the two bolt holes. Okay, we're adjusted for the first hole. Hope you don't mind I'm lefty here. My fat hand is in the way. Let me move this. Please uh, excuse all the junk around here. Let me see if I can focus this in a little bit better. This Starrett height gauge is really old school, but I got it from one of my clients, and I'll definitely treasure it. Um, we'll see if uh, any of you guys can figure out what company that is. Now I've readjusted for our second hole.
Okay, we're all set now. I'm gonna take you over to the uh, drill press and we're gonna drill some holes. Okay guys, now we're at our um, Delta Rockwell variable speed press. Uh, I have not used any die cam or other, uh, or magic marker to mark my holes. Um, the trick there is to have a good, I have a halogen light. It's, um, I think this one I got from banggood.com. It's a halogen. Thing works excellent. So that's the trick is just to have a just to have a really good light. You can see the the uh, at the, or the scribe marks. Uh, no need to center drill. These don't have to be uh, precise. Uh, as long as the, the screws fit in there, I'm fine with it. Something you don't want to happen. Just trying to get those chips off of there. Okay, let's go for number two. That's why you should never stick your fingers in there. Two down, two to go. to our last hole. Looks like they all lined up fantastically.
right guys there you have it okay guys here we're at our, our John Deere 420 cutting deck and uh, you can see how I assembled it it's uh get you to focus a little bit better we have the uh, the main rectangular bar going through where the uh, the anti-scalping wheels usually go we have the uh, lower two bolts they're uh, red loctited in you can see we have the wheel we have the uh, washer we have the lynch pins and then on top you can see the maybe you can see the uh, the small holes for the lynch pins it's not a good area of the workshop here there's too much junk but uh, as you see we're going to just go ahead and put our put our lynch pin through put our 5 8 washer on we're going to put our Harbor Freight wheel on there. One more washer. And our lynch pin. Okay. Gonna rinse and repeat on this side. Okay. Now with this one, we have a small issue. Harbor Freight left the, uh, I guess the, whatever that is, the bearing or not the bearing, but the bushing out. I really don't care. As long as the tire don't fall off, I'll, I'll go, next time I get to Harbor Freight, I'll take it back and replace it. But in the meantime, I don't think it's going to fall off. It's a little sloppy, but there it is. Gonna go handheld here a little bit. So there you have it. What I'm gonna do next is I'll set it up on all four wheels and uh, we're gonna roll it out, put it in a storage shed and we'll get some room in the workshop. All right guys, that's gonna conclude this video. Um, I hope you uh, guys uh, got some tips here. I hope maybe you wanna do this to your cutting deck it was a fun little job. It only took a couple hours. And, um, you know, I've been wrestling with this uh, cutting deck for about two years now because it would never stand up on its own. It would kept sliding down and falling. And it took up a lot of my container because uh, it was laying flat rather than standing up. So uh, this is definitely a great uh, addition. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Take care.